Today we are looking at Job 24. We read in verse 1 that Job says, Why doesn't the Almighty bring the wicked to judgment, and why must the godly wait for him in vain? You see, Job is questioning why the wicked aren't being punished. Most of us is probably at some point ask, why do bad things happen to good people? Or why do good things happen to bad people? You see, we have somehow started to believe that rewards only happen when we do good things, and bad things always happen to people who have done bad things. Yes, biblically we know there is a price for sin. The Bible is plain on that account, but there is not what we are looking at here. So here's the thing we have to ask. Why we as Christians are even asking that question? If we love as Christ loved, we see Jesus on the cross saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you hear the love and compassion Jesus had for the very people that were killing him? Why do we think in a fallen world that we will not face hardship? In 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13, it says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for those trials make you partners with Christ in His suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing His glory when it is revealed to all the world. You see, I guess the question to ask here is, why are we so tempted to envy the wicked? Because that's what it is, right? We are jealous that everything seems to be going great in their lives, and we want to know why can't that happen to us? Friends, listen. First, you never really know what is going on in others' lives. And second, the Bible tells us that God is patient and long-suffering, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Family, let's do better, including me, to pray for and reach out to those that need Christ and not be jealous of what they have acquired by doing things the wrong way. I understand the temptation to be sick of seeing evil prosper, but Christ would tell you to pray for them because their eyes have not yet been opened to the gospel of Jesus. He is the one that does the knocking on their hearts. We should be the ones oiling the door hinges so it swings a little easier when they are ready to open it. On a personal note here, this is the book that brought me back to Christ after three and a half years of spiritual frustration and hurt because I felt I checked all the boxes and did everything I could to live righteously. And I believe that God abandoned me by allowing my four-year-old to pass away. See, while that is a whole other story, I want to say this. I set myself up to think that just because I was a Christian, I was preaching and working at a church, that I was owed a perfect, painless life. You see, when the pain came, I broke because I felt I deserved more. I was reminded recently by a friend of what I really deserve. The book of Job reminded me that I was not there when God formed the foundation of the earth and caused it to be all that it is now. So who am I to question God? What I need to constantly remember and remind myself of is this. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. Romans 8, 28.